Welcome to the slice of the show where you set the agenda and I try to unravel travel. First, Richard from Hertfordshire tweeted at BBC Travel Show with a simple question. Any recommendations for family resorts in the Canaries good for an eight-month-old? Richard, Spain's southern islands comprise ideal territory for a young family. The flight time from your local airports, Luton and Stansted, is just four hours, and even the budget properties in the Canaries offer good, safe standards. For price, choose a cheap package to Playa de las Americas in Tenerife, which also has the most diversity to offer if you're keen to explore an island in a rental car. But if you simply want rest, head for the quieter island of Lanzarote. The resort of Puerta del Carmen is close to, but not too near, the island's airport, with a low-key ambience and plenty of places to eat and drink. In terms of timing, avoid July and August when high prices coincide with high temperatures. September onwards is perfect. Next, Owain Jenkins from Sussex is off to Dubrovnik in Croatia. I have about $1,000 in cash left over from various trips to the States. What would be the best way to change the dollars to local currency? The worst strategy would be to convert the dollars into sterling and then into the Croatian currency, the kuna. You'd lose two margins on the transaction. So wait until you get to Croatia, which has flourishing competition between Bureau de Change. Just shop around for the best rate when you arrive. But if you're planning to revisit America anytime soon and you have a cash cushion, you could be better off changing sterling for Kuna and keeping the dollars for your next American adventure. Talking of American adventures, Julian Burnell has a sorry tale we hear far too often at the BBC Travel Show. My daughter was duped thinking she was on the official US Esther website. She paid $140 for it and is heartbroken. Anything we can do? Sadly, no. But hopefully this incident will remind viewers not to be taken in. Most visitors to the US need to apply online through the Electronic System for Travel Authorization, ESTA for short. The fee is $40. But if you tap something like ESTA application into a search engine, at the top of the list you'll see a couple of websites run by commercial firms that charge more than this. In your daughter's case, 10 times as much. These companies' conditions are tightly written and she will have agreed, perhaps inadvertently, to pay for an application service, so it's unlikely any claim for a refund would succeed. So the official site you need is esther.cbp.dhs.gov. Carol App tweeted at BBC Travel Show to say, I have fake tourist East German stamps in my passport. Will it affect me getting into Australia? I'd never recommend collecting fake border crossing stamps in a passport, even for a country like the German Democratic Republic that ceased to exist 25 years ago. The genuine articles can cause plenty of problems as it is. I've been thrown out of Honduras because my passport contained a Cuban stamp. Apparent evidence of travel to some sensitive destinations can increase the curiosity of immigration officials in various parts of the world. But I contacted the Department of Immigration and Border Protection in Canberra on your behalf and I was told as long as a person's passport is valid and the personal particulars page hasn't been defaced or damaged in any way and the person holds a valid Australian visa, the tourist stamps in the passport will have no effect. That's all for now, but if you've got a travel question, I'm here to help. Just email thetravelshow at bbc.com and I'll do my very best to find you an answer. From me, Simon Calder, the global guru, bye for now and see you next time. Later in the Global Guru segment of the Travel Show with me, Simon Calder, the best resort in the Canaries for a young family, and could a fake East German passport stamp cause problems on a trip to Australia?